You know, I want to connect right now to Mr. Mithi Borwala. And the question I want to ask you, sir, is taking off from what Mr. Sudhinder Kulkarni said, the fact is, yes, the interference of international Islamic states is condemnable. But is there a sense now where the protest that we saw today, you know, we're going to get to the point that they turned violent, that there was arson involved, uh, which has no place in Indian democracy. We'll get to that point. But the fact that these protests happened after Islamic nations across the world condemned it uh, with what went down and the government was compelled to take action, that the Muslims in this country are now identifying with the larger identity of being Muslims and identifying with these nations instead of their core identity of what we'd hoped that they would, which is being Indian. No, I don't think that's true. Indian Muslims clearly identify as Indians. And in fact, uh, let me tell you about the hypocrisy of these so-called Gulf Islamic nations. For them, it is, they, they have come out when there has been a insult to the Prophet Muhammad. True. But where were these Gulf nations when Muslims are being lynched, calls for social economic boycott, calls for genocide from the Dharam Sansad? There was no uh, Gulf nation or Islamic nation ever talking about it. They don't, they, they don't really, they don't really care. These True. same Gulf nations don't care for Palestine. The Saudis are involved in the greatest genocide in Yemen right now. Or the Uyghurs in, Chinese, in China? Uh, uh, yeah, no, that's a different question. I don't agree on that point. I don't okay. think the Chinese are indulging in that, but that's a different issue. Right. I'm, uh, but the point is that as far as the Gulf nations are concerned, the, we have the sorry state of the Taliban giving us teachings on multi-religious societies. But let's also understand what Sudhinder Kulkini is saying out here that the government of India has brought this disrespect upon India. We are now answering countries like Qatar and Pakistan and UAE and the others who don't have this uh, understanding of universal, or, or don't base themselves on the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Don't, these are all Islamic states. The Hifazatul Islam of Bangladesh is giving us lessons on secularism. Mm -hmm. But this is what Hindutva has done to this country, especially in the last three years, where we've actually come down to this level of these Islamic countries. Now also I'm saying that today's protests, yes, uh, uh, Muslims are too scared to protest, actually. I mean, the way things are, I'm, I'm surprised to see protests in Uttar Pradesh and they've turned violent. The point is, yes, you can protest, but no violence is very clear. Mm -hmm. This is a country of Mahatma Gandhi and of Maulana Azad and of Baba Sambedkar. You have every right of, to protest, but this is no way to uh, right. target the police and to stone throwing and all that, okay? The other thing I'd like to say is that actually human rights is not an internal matter anymore. Human rights is a universal value. I have a right to speak out against the blacks being targeted in America. I have a right to speak out against the minorities being targeted in Pakistan. I have a right to speak out against the Palestinians being targeted by the Israelis. I have a right to speak out and so do other countries. I mean, the United States for all its evil, but they do come out with an international report, uh, the Commission of you know, Religious Rights. That report is very, very important. So our own friendly allies are seeing how India is descending into a mobocracy. Right. And uh, yeah, so the, that's the point. Okay. But I think, if you, I, I think what really is required right now right. is for the Prime Minister to speak out to call for yes. an end to this.